also a really big honor for me to bring out the next guest. As I mentioned in my monologue, um, due to lack of funding, our public defenders are actually refusing to take on some new cases and in what's being called at their office a constitutional crisis. So please give a warm welcome to the chief defender from the Orleans Public Defenders, Derwin Bunton. Hey man, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. No, thank you for having me. And like I was saying, um, the Sixth Amendment of the United States Constitution mm -hmm. gives someone the right to counsel. This is one of the things the cops say to you if you're being arrested. That's you have right. a right to an attorney. That's right. And due to lack of funding, uh, your office actually reached the point where you're saying you're not going to take on some new cases. Right. Now, I understand you don't have the resources to properly serve, but um, how do you justify going so far as to actually refuse to take on new cases? Well, the, our obligation as, as a public defender office is to provide representation that comports with the Constitution, relevant ethical standards, and performance standards. I always call it the, the triangle of public defense. And to the extent we can't handle a case constitutionally, ethically, and in, accord in, in accordance with standards, it falls out of that triangle, and we can't, we can't handle it. So, so what's happening to people? Well, a lot of different things are happening to people yeah. um, at that point. So what happens is if you're in custody, then you have the court either appointing pro bono counsel, private counsel working for free. Uh, you wait, you sit in jail. Uh, or the court uh, sometimes will, will order us to take it anyway and essentially order us to be unethical. Wow. So you're, you're faced with a choice between having someone basically just wait in jail or serving them and risking wrongful right. conviction? Right, and, and that's, the, that's the problem. And all of this is a product of our user pay criminal justice system here in Louisiana. What, is that, what does that mean, user pay? In, in Louisiana, we're the only state in the country that depends on fines and fees paid by, by users, defendants, our clients, going through the system to actually operate the system. And two-thirds of public defender budgets are made up of court costs, fines, and fees that are paid by our clients. And there's a reason why other states don't do it that way. It's because it doesn't work. The, yes. <laughs> the, the criminal justice system is sort of aimed and oriented at the poorest and mo most vulnerable people in our communities. And so depending on that uh, demographic to actually fund your system, yields the results that we're dealing with right now. Now, I've heard that's a bit of a conflict of interest because you're, I mean, if people are found guilty, they're paying fines or fees, mm -hmm. and, but it's your job to, you know, try to make sure they avoid that. <laughs> well, uh, I, I gave a speech one time and I, I, I began by saying, uh, and I had a bad conversation with a prosecutor. Um, and, you know, footnote, I've never had a good conversation <laughs> with a prosecutor. <laughs> um, but I had a bad conversation with a prosecutor, and I said, you know, I'm tired of the district attorney mixing in the innocent with the not guilty, is what I, is what I told the group. Uh, and so it is, it is our job to do the best we can for our clients, but our system is actually absurd. So if you, if you are arrested for a crime, and you are too poor to, to afford an attorney, the first thing that happens is you owe me $40. That's the, that's the application fee for me to determine oh, if you're eligible wow. for our services. So the, even if you're not guilty at all of the crime, you still 
you still have to pay. It is a non-refundable administrative fee, uh, by statute, actually. And so if, if we then take the case, and you are then found guilty or plead guilty, you owe us another $45. That's the public defender fee uh, that comes with other court costs. And all of this while we're trying to tell you how hard we're working for you and on your behalf, but it's not lost on our clients that, hey, you get paid to lose because there is no payment if there's an acquittal or the case is dismissed. You owe us nothing. And so when you meet your client, they're like, you're working for the system, you're working with the DA, you're just trying to get paid. And I'm like, you might have read that somewhere, but we actually work very hard uh, for our clients and believe in the highest quality representation possible uh, for all of our clients. And we feel very strongly there should be no difference between rich people justice and poor people justice. And so we work very hard toward that. But Sometimes when, when you have resource problems, if you can't walk around violating attorney ethics. And sometimes half a lawyer is worse than no lawyer at all. Yeah. And tell me, what, tell, tell me why that's true. Well, if you, if you sort of kind of represent somebody, I'll, the example that, that really made me understand that we had to not be complicit in this injustice is when the bunny friend shooting happened mm -hmm. and they arrested a, a young man, a new father, 32 year old African American man who immediately said I'm innocent. But there was an eyewitness that said he was one of the shooters. He was arrested. His bond was $1.7 million. Wow. Um, and he sat in jail saying I didn't do it. Uh, and his, his mother said he didn't do it. And his girlfriend, the mother of his child, said, he didn't do it, he wasn't there. And I can tell you from being an attorney for about 20 years that those cases, if that's all you got, the district attorney is going to say, of course his mother said she, he wasn't there and didn't do it, that's his mother. Of course his girlfriend is going to say he wasn't there, he didn't do it, that's his girlfriend. And they're going to discredit them as trying to get their, their baby off, trying to get their boyfriend off. And he would have been uh, on trial for his life, an innocent man on trial for his life, on what a case, uh, in a case where our mayor called it an act of domestic terrorism wow. right. uh, with his mama and his baby mama saying he wasn't there. But what they were able to do is hire a private attorney, his family was, who was immediately able to go out to Houston and actually find the footage of them in the mall shopping at the time of the crime in Houston. And I said, given our resources, I looked at that and I said, given our resources, I can't guarantee we would have made it to Houston in time. Wow. Time before that, that surveillance is erased because it recycles. Oh, goodness. It recycles. And so in all these convenience stores, all these shopping malls, all these department stores, if you're not there fast enough, then he's in jail with only his mama and his baby mama saying he didn't do it. And I said, you know what? We can't be a part of that. So we began right. refusing cases. Did you, yeah, I, I hear that. Was that, was that one of the, those moments in your mind, it's like this, this person might have done some serious prison time had we handled the case and we have to say no to well, the, all the evidence is there. Like it's in, in Louisiana, we have the highest incarceration rate in the country, in the country that incarcerates more people than anyone else in the world. And we also have the highest exoneration rate in the country, the highest wrongful conviction, conviction rate, rate. Yes. in the country. So we make the most mistakes and put the most people in jail. And that should be enough of a wake-up call for a lot of people, and it certainly is for for me and for the rest of my staff, is we've got to do better, we've got to be better. Because at its core, it's, it's the, there's a very fundamental question we need to ask ourselves as, as, as members of this, this community, as folks who believe in justice, is, is there a difference between poor people and rich people justice? And I always get mad, people 
people say, I got criticized, I literally got criticized by an appellate court judge who, who said, uh, he's trying to run his, his, the public defender's office like it's a law firm. Wow. That was my criticism. Wow. Um, because poor people don't deserve law firms. That's, what, that's what's at the core of comments like that. I hear a lot of times from decision makers, well, you just want Cadillac representation, um, which, is, which, is, which is cute. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick Cadillac. Um, <laughs> you, know, you know, maybe Mercedes. <laughs> you know, Bugatti justice. <laughs> Uh, you just want a Cadillac, you want Cadillac representation, but I have yet to hear anyone define for me what is Cadillac about what I want to do. I want to investigate cases timely. I want to, I want to protect innocence, defend the Constitution, hold the system accountable. Is that, if that's a Cadillac, then we've got a real problem. And, and what, what's at the core, again, is are poor people deserving of a fair shot? Are they deserving of justice? Because that's who the system is aimed at. That's who we represent. Uh, and that's who I'm accountable to. So um, I, guess, I, I guess I'm trying to drive Cadillacs. Yeah. yeah. Now, the, and this is all coming to the head because recently the ACLU has sued your office. Mm -hmm. Um, for not, I guess, giving people their basic Sixth Amendment right. Um, I have to ask, why, why is the Orleans Public Defenders being sued and not um, the state of Louisiana? Well, a lot of that is complicated legally on how you sue a state, but um, I'm included in the suit. Our Public Defender Board uh, is included in the suit, uh, but ultimately it will have to be a state responsibility uh, in, in that action. And no one, no one likes to be sued, um, right? Like, right. I got the complaint. First of all, you got to read all that nonsense, um, <laughs> especially, you know, as lawyers, it's like, we got to read it all. Um, and, uh, but at the same time, I, I welcome, I, I welcome a, a discussion about this. I welcome reform. We've got to get away from user pay justice in Louisiana. Nobody else does it. It doesn't work. It's inadequate. It's unstable. It's unreliable in terms of the resources it generates for poor people and their representation. Even if I get my $40 application fee and $45 uh, public defender fee from every client, let's just assume they have to pay it no matter what, uh, it costs more than $85 to represent somebody. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Like it just, it just does. Um, and so with the, with the lawsuit, there's some things we're going, we're going to have to uh, work out. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll defend ourselves um, in that lawsuit. Uh, you know, part of it is they're asking for, uh, they're trying to declare our case refusals unconstitutional. And we're gonna have, we're gonna have to have you know, a real uh, discussion about that because the alternative is you, you force me to take these cases and um, I, 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 I'm, I'm violating ethics. And you're running the risk you were talking about with the, the bunny right. friend incident. Yeah. Right, because that person thinking they, they've got good counsel, thinking they've got a lawyer working for them, doesn't realize that as we can't get to their case on time, as we can't investigate their charges, that tape is being erased. You know, that yeah. tape is being erased. That witness is moving away. Uh, that memory of who saw something is fading. All that is happening as I get an investigation request to one of my eight investigators who is in my office, uh, which is responsible for 22,000 cases a year. Uh, that's wow. just not, it's just not going to happen. Um, and we, and we, uh, we are tired of pretending that it's not unjust. Um, uh, we never really pretended it was unjust. Um, and I, I, at this point, we're going to have to, we're just going to have to litigate it. And hopefully, there's a resolution that comes through that makes, makes our community more just, more fair, um, less incarcerating, 
uh, and less wrongful when it comes to poor people going yeah. through the criminal justice system. I really hope so, and I, I'm really taking away from this interview your statement about uh, is poor people justice different than rich people justice? You know, and I wish your office a lot of luck. I know you're you're in a very hard place, and especially with um, all this talk about our state budget deficit, mm -hmm. um, which means maybe even less money for public defenders. And right. I'm hoping with this ACLU lawsuit that, um, I don't know, our state's forced to <laughs> properly well, fund and... We'll, we'll see. The yeah. governor seems unfazed by the lawsuit. But the good thing about a federal lawsuit is federal judges can make you do stuff. <laughs> um, and so uh, it's, it's not like, and this is a strange thing about State courts, a state court can have a judgment. You know, talk to some of your friends who have a judgment against the city of New Orleans and how long they've had that judgment and when they're going to get paid. Because that state court judge can't make, can't make Mitch pay. Uh, that's why it was really funny when I watched, for example, him say, oh, I'll, I'll do the rest of my term on house arrest. Uh, because he knew he couldn't be put on house arrest. Yeah. Uh, state judge can't do that. But a federal judge, a federal judge can seize state assets to satisfy a judgment. He can take the city's payroll if he wants to. Uh, he or she can seize assets and apply them where the problem is. And that's what really scares state decision makers. And so we'll be looking, hopefully, for, for some fix on that. And, but really what I want, I, need, I want fundamental reform on, on user pay. Like I think it's just absolutely absurd, absolutely ridiculous that in a system that is aimed at the poorest, that we'd ask the poorest to pay. And you know, we've got an uphill battle. The governor's proposed budget uh, cut public defender funding by two thirds. Wow. Um, so it, didn't, it doesn't look any better. Um, Right, but part of that also is part of his doomsday budget that closes LSU in April, kills football, um, and you know there was like a collective gasp in Louisiana. Yeah. You know, forget public defense, football. It's like no more LSU. Um, but that's 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 what we're up against, and you know we'll be we'll be fighting like we've all, like we've been fighting for the last few years. Well, um, I believe that we're always stronger as a community, so I encourage everyone here um, that hears this and cares about this issue to have this conversation and spread awareness and let people know what's going on because this is, um, we're being denied our basic constitutional rights um, and it's, it's not right. No, Derwin, thank you very much. Thank you so much for being on the show and all the hard work you do. Thank you so much. We're going to be right back with Alexis and the Samurai. But uh, please, another big round of applause for one of the hardest working people in New Orleans, Darwin Button. <laughs>